Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkio Miesma and today we have another care collab for you guys. And I say we this time because I'm not alone. I, we have quite a list of uh, participants and this time Fernanda uh, is um, putting this all together. Fernanda, I want to thank you because I was uh, quite late with my notification that I would like to join in and you made it all happen, so I'm very thankful for that. Thank you so much for giving me these, the time and the opportunity uh, to join in. And this care collab will go uh, about the uh, Lelia purpurata and in my case the variety Aruba, of Rubra, yes, the purple one. And I only have one at this moment, but I must uh, say that um, probably the end of this week I will have my second one. I bought another one. I had my eyes on it for uh, quite a while. It is the uh, work Haushi Eye, if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, probably not, <laughs> but it will be, be my second one. And I um, have another variety, uh, but I didn't bought it yet. But I will hope... Uh, Oh, I, I try to find it and I will add it to my collection someday, but um, you will see it uh, when I have it. But today I'll be going to talk about this one, it's uh, right above me and I will, whoops, there's my finger. <laughs> this orchid is located here. Um, but before we do that, i like to uh, mention the other channels uh, who are participating in this uh, video and then we will have a look uh, about my orchid. I will take it into the orchid uh, room. Uh, so I can take it out of this pot and have a look at the root system. It's a fairly new uh, orchid to me, so it's, it is establishing and it's going somewhere. It's now working on a new growth, but we will talk about that um, in a minute. So now I will uh, uh, let you know who are uh, joining in on this care collab uh, now. So I had to grab my phone uh, for this one because um, yeah, the backlighting is uh, quite hard. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, it's quite a quite a list, and I cannot remember these uh, this beautiful list on top of my head. So here we go, and uh, let me um, put in screen some uh, blooms. This is my fail wall, by the way. But uh, the other ones who are uh, joining in on this care collab are Apartment Life Orchids, Dignas Tropicana, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. Karen's Argus, Mary G. Argus, Math by Nature, Ninja Argus, Patricia Argus, Plants and Other Things, Rogers Argus, and Tropical Plants of Finland. So that's quite a list, and I'm really looking forward to check out the, uh, the videos of uh, these uh, wonderful growers as well. So I will do this after I uh, uploaded mine, and I will uh, see um, how uh, they uh, do take care of their preparatas. And I will have the links of them in my uh, video description. And there's always something that I uh, forget to mention, I apologize for that. But if you like to join in on any care collab you see, just give a um, message in the comment section. And so basically give a comment that you would like to join in and we will uh, reach out to you. So it's possible uh, for basically everyone who is filming uh, their orchids to join in. I think that's one of the beauties of these care collabs. So now here is my uh, coming care collab about the Purpurea rubra. And there we have my uh, one and only Lelia Purpurata. I will uh, grab the tag. I have the variety Aruba. I hope you can uh, read that. I should uh, rewrite this uh, tag, but it's, uh, it says uh, Lelia Purpurata Far Aruba. And I potted it up at uh, August 24th of uh, 2020. So I have it a few months, about a half a year in my collection now. And what I can find on this orchid on, um, when you Google it is that it's native to uh, Mexico and it likes cooler to intermediate temperatures and uh, also light wise. Um, I give mine quite some light. It will show uh, the place where I have it in my greenhouse a bit better after we have a look inside of the pot. But that is where I have uh, put it. It gets quite some uh, light during the day. 
And when I had this Arcot, I uh, quite quickly did a repot it into semi-hydro, uh, uh, semi uh, basically self-watering is actually what I'm having here. But um, yeah, I like to grow my Arcot self-watering, so therefore I uh, wanted this in a self-watering pot as well. I just buy uh, quite cheap outer pots and I use the most of the times regularly inner pots. So I uh, reuse the pots uh, where the arc is coming uh, in uh, with the smaller ones and sometimes I uh, grab a few bigger ones. This one is actually a bit bigger and like I said I'm going to get her out of the pot so we can have a look at the root system. There we are. So as you can see here we have uh, beautiful new roots. Green roots, we have some older ones here that is uh, is to be expected. Most of the times the older roots not really uh, like to adapt to a, a new situation, new upcutting situation, or even uh, going to die, which happens in most cases, I must admit. But what I did found is if you start up slowly, and if I don't forget, I will have a uh, link to how I introduce, how I let my argots uh, get used to a self-watering setup. But if you keep it quite slowly, so you don't water it uh, with a uh, water full of reservoir right from the start, but you wait till the roots start to grow, sometimes all the roots will branch and thereby the other root will sort of uh, stay alive uh, because uh, the um, new part of the root is adjusted to your new situation. So therefore the older part may not work as properly as it should but newer sections will so thereby um, the root will still be active and that is what you can get if you are slowly building up your arcade into a new situation it not always works but it works uh, much better than i did it in the beginning when i just filled it up with water and hoped the arcade would survive i'm not doing that anymore until i see new roots new root tips this is an aerial root but if I see those beautiful green, green tips growing inside of the pot or even uh, uh, on the uh, outer section, on the, uh, the edge of the pot, I should say, I uh, start uh, filling up the reservoir because these, this new part will adjust to its new environment. So therefore, I will take advantage of that. And so we have some roots left here. But yeah, this is... It feels kind of firm, but I, it's a quite bit of an older root but still we have here quite some new roots so I did this one did take up quite uh, quite beautifully and yeah most of the roots are on this section and that is uh, was to be expected because the newer part is uh, this uh, part of the plant I will now zoom out a little bit so you can see the plant a little bit more I'm sorry and adjust the camera so it's not a very old plant, it's, it's already quite big, it's quite long, so therefore it's kind of top heavy, but it keeps itself in place because the roots are in a pot, so it's very sturdy in, the, in a pot. Um, this new growth um, was already there, but it did uh, finish, it did mature in my, uh, my uh, care, and now recently it started this new, newer um, part there, I hope you can see it, yes I think you can. This is a new growth. It's facing a little bit downwards, but it will get up to the light again. And therefore, I hope these roots will uh, get in the pot as well. It's a little bit quite above the pot. That was because it had quite a root system and I tried to um, keep all the roots. And I must admit with uh, Cattleya types, if you have the humidity in your uh, er growing area around 60, uh, 65, which is my preferred uh, um, amount of humidity, humidity uh, the roots will not die off and they will uh, take off um, into the pot uh, quite easily. So I don't um, expect any problems with these newer roots going into the pot. And you can see even this aerial root is uh, still, uh, like I show you, uh, still uh, show you um, as a green tip, it's still growing. So thereby it, uh, it doesn't have any media to keep it moist, but it's beautiful, it's quite long. So I um, thereby know that this, the immunity that I have is uh, okay by this orchid. So I will probably will not have any troubles, even though the orchid is quite, um, quite high above the pot. 
Um, so yeah, I didn't have it in bloom. Um, I probably did have uh, leave it to bloom if it would start some uh, some buds, but I must admit because I was very curious to see how this one uh, looked like uh, blooming wise, but. I must admit, this, this was a better choice, and luckily the archer decided not to bloom, but to take his energy and put it into that new growth and uh, extending its root system. Uh, like I told you already, it's quite kind of uh, new to my collection, so therefore it could use the energy and to establish itself. And probably this new growth will uh, bloom, but as you can see it's just uh, starting so it will take uh, quite some months i have no idea how long it will take it's uh, like i said a new plant for me but i like it i like uh, to have it uh, yeah, it's quite quite big and hopefully we will uh, one day get some different directions of growth i will put it back in a in a pot now and then we can have a little bit of a talk about the feed that i give it And probably you already saw it, but what I did forget to mention is that I have it uh, in a mixture of Lekka and Pumice. Uh, I use Lekka still because I have it uh, laying around and I have quite a lot of this. It's kind of okay, but my personal preference goes out to the Pumice. It's a little bit softer and I think it, it doesn't hold as much salt as the Lekka does somehow it's just a feeling it's just something i think i noticed uh, in my plants but it's very hard to uh, to show it and to measure it but it's just a feeling and i i all uh, what i do see is that they uh, when they first start to grow in the in the media you may have sometimes have a, a dry top layer therefore i use some pebbles like animal does in uh, from the orchid room but still the leca they, they, not all the orchids like it. It's too dry. I don't know what's happening with it, but I really don't like it. With pumice, I do not have any problems with that. So therefore, I like to uh, get some pumice. And um, what I also not uh, do, um, not really not liking doing, is uh, flushing my orchids. And I know everyone, uh, everybody uh, uh, talks about flushing, especially when you grow, say, hydroponic or self-watering. Uh, I do it a little bit different. It's just um, it started because I have too many orchids and I cannot flush them as regularly as I should. Um, but um, that made me thinking, and now I'm testing out how I can uh, get a nice sort of uh, yeah a bioculture. I don't know how to call it going on in a reservoir. Um, because I sometimes think that we can be too clean. The, um, not everything is as clean in nature as uh, uh, we think it might be. I know orchids get uh, a lot of rain and they get do get uh, quite some flushes. But still, I think uh, it can be beneficial. But the downside is, and I found it out the hard way, is that the pH goes down quite um, rapidly after uh, six months or something. So therefore I keep uh, lists from my orchids and I'm going to show you a list here. Um, I measure my reservoir and my PPMs every three months from the orchids. Sometimes two months, but most of the times I try to get it as three months, so it saves up a little bit time. And uh, this one, the Lelia uh, Perperata Ruby, is listed as number 10 here on my list. And the last time it had a pH of 697 and a PPM of 155. I like to keep the PPM under um, the 200 mark. The pH is a little bit high, but in three months it will probably will be lower. So therefore, um, that's okay. And also, I adjust my pH when I'm fertilizing. So I have a uh, adjusted pH in that water. Uh, so I basically try to copy the setup from the start. When you start um, with fresh media, that will arise, arise the pH. So therefore, you need a um, pH down solution in your fertilizer to balance that up. And I'm basically uh, copying that um, principle. And I was kind of, yeah, I was, 
I thought it would be working because, or it should be working because uh, when you put argets uh, freshly in a new media, in new lacquer, new pumice, as long as it, it's uh, fresh and not too much salt in it, they will take off. They will start to grow, and especially, you, yeah, of course, you need to do it at the right time and everything. But the principle uh, is there that it, they start to grow even in a higher pH, so they should be able to take it. The downside is if it stays too high, too high, too long, they cannot uptake all the feed that I need. But so therefore, I keep adjusting that, uh, like I said, uh, when I water my orchids. So every single orchid I have. Uh, growing in semi-hydroponic uh, self-watering, I have a list and I will keep track of the uh, the reservoir, basically. So, that is what I do in, uh, in sh short and briefly in general, but this is the this is a care collab and this is uh, obviously the care that I give my orchid, so therefore I uh, keep referring to uh, my system and how I grow it. And this one does uh, have the same uh, treatment and I think she does well. So that's um, basically the basics of how I grow it. Let's now have a look at where I have put it in my greenhouse and we will talk about light and temperatures. So I tried to give a little bit of an overview of my greenhouse, but it's kind of hard because I cannot uh, back up any further. But um, yeah, it's uh, like we saw in the intro, it's uh, standing over here. Um, so on the upper shelf, that means it's closer to the roof where it will uh, receive quite some uh, daylight because my, this, my sun, <laughs> the sun is coming up uh, in the morning around 10 o'clock uh, there in that side of the greenhouse and it will go over the greenhouse until uh, about 7 or 8 in the, um, in the evening. So it will uh, get quite some light. I have it filtered, I still have my bubble wraps there and I also have uh, some uh, shading paint uh, on my um, greenhouse. <laughs> uh, if you are interested, uh, I have a video on how I put it on the greenhouse and I will talk about it in that video more. But it uh, gives beautiful uh, light. The funny thing of a shading paint is that when it rains, it starts to get transparent again. And when uh, the sun is shining or it's a clear, dry day, it will uh, get white again. So far, so good. This is the first summer in my greenhouse. I'm fairly new to this uh, greenhouse. Um, we had it uh, built last year around November, so it's uh, my first summer. So far, it's not a very hot summer, but yeah, so far, so good. And um, I have it uh, um, standing over there because there are a few orchids that get a little bit more sun, probably, but. There's not a lot of difference, I think, but uh, therefore I have it a little bit more over to the left side um, because these these are, are, are liking uh, even a little bit more sun. And I will definitely keep my eye out for this one. So far, so good. It doesn't start to purple, uh, getting purple edges or purple leaves like some of my other orchids did, who were standing uh, uh, on this upper shelf as well. So I did um, find a new place for them. But uh, so far this one uh, doesn't do it, so I think it likes the light levels that it gets. Um, the temp temperature is uh, on the hottest, on the warmest days around 30 degrees. I keep it, uh, sometimes it will get to 30, 32, 33, but I try to keep it at, uh, at 30. But sometimes it's just hard if the sun is shi shining all day. Uh, you have a job to keep the temperature uh, not rising too much, but so far it, uh, it works. And uh, in the night time, I don't get it below uh, 18 degrees. Especially because I'm uh, growing them with a reservoir in water and they don't like cold water. If you uh, want to uh, let your roots die off quickly, you should get that water quite, water quite cold. And uh, probably in one day, you will lose your roots. It goes very quickly. So therefore, I keep, uh, keep it at 18 degrees. Um, in winter. In summer it's uh, easier, but in winter I have to heat up the greenhouse. But uh, yeah, so far this is uh, basically what I give it uh, care-wise. Um, yeah, and I will have a video uh, coming up where I talk about my fertilizers. So if you are having questions about that, or what kind of fertilizers I use, um, I will have it on my channel because it's, it will be too much, too long for one video, or at least in this care collab. But um, I fertilize it around 100 ppm per watering. 
Um, sometimes it goes uh, up to 130, but that's it. I will not go higher um, because I don't flush, so I will keep um, the reservoirs as clean as I can. I will have uh, basically all kinds of feeding in there, so I try to give it a sort of buffet so it can choose what it wants, but I don't want any salt builds up or create situations where salt builds up would uh, start to thrive if I could put it like that, so therefore I keep it quite low on the PPMs, parts per million. In winter I fertilize around 50 to 80 if we have some beautiful days, but if it's kind of dark and cold it will have 50 and most of the times once every month it, uh, my orchids do get uh, clean RO water, just uh, once again to keep that reservoir low on uh, parts per million to avoid a salt build up. So far I had no salt build up for this orchid. Um, so that's good I think. Um, I think this is it for this care collab. Uh, thank you so much for um, joining in and and while I was working on my outro for this video uh, my battery died and it took me a little second before I noticed it so I was basically talking to nobody. <laughs> But uh, now I have my camera, so it's uh, a little bit uh, less um, strange talking this otherwise. But anyhow, um, back, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for watching. I really hope uh, you enjoy these care collabs. Uh, and on top of my head, the next one will be about the zygopetalums, uh, where I will join in again. Um, that is going to be a good one uh, again, I think, because the psychopetalum can be also a uh, orchid that is uh, can be quite struggling for some uh, people. Um, but anyhow, that is us for uh, to come here on our channels. For now, I just want to say thank you for watching, and also a big thank you for all the subscribers, and especially a little bit for the newer ones. I'm really uh, enjoying you uh, having you here, and I really hope I. Uh, do add something interesting in your uh, col collection of uh, channels because there are quite a lot of orchid growers uh, yeah, starting to filming their orchids and I think that's uh, that's very nice. I really enjoy it. Uh, I subscribe to quite a lot of them. So, uh, but yeah, I hope you have uh, something. You find something here as well. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye bye.